Hello everyone. I found myself in another conversation. It happens to be a conversation that I've had in the past. Um, the new conversation has made me rethink a few things and come up with more ideas. Um, real quickly though, I just want to point out this video because I did link this in the conversation from a long time ago. This video does a really good job of discussing how games have attempted to balance out snipers and they gave a pretty good list of things that have been tried. Uh, considering that, I am going to be trying to say things differently and avoiding copying this video. I'll just go and give you the summary of what I remember from this video. There has been numerous attempts uh, from games, such as Battlefield's attempt to uh, leave a sm uh, smoke trail, if you will, of the bullets so people know which direction it came from. In Call of Duty, they've done things like um, glint on the scope. And those are kind of the things that this video was covering. So that's the video. Let me go and talk about my solutions to um, this whole issue. First, let me start with a compromise before we get into uh, Dave Defeat. I, I know from both conversations, the one in the past and from this one, people have told me, well, Quick scope sniping is what makes it fun uh, for some people. So if that's the case, here's my compromise. I would say make that a separate game mode, but do not force um, this whole I can win with one shot on people who just want to use ARs or not really good at sniping. Yes, I know it's it rewards you for being accurate, but it's not fun for other people to be one shot at close range with a weapon that you should be winning with at close range, you know? So, like, if you're using an SMG, you should be winning at close range, but because they've made the snipers so powerful in one shot, it's not possible in a lot of situations. And I don't care how much skill is involved or anything, it's just not fun for people, and that should be recognized. It doesn't matter, okay? Think about the other players, not yourself. Okay, moving on. So I think it's good to mention Dave Defeat because actually I did not mention this in the last recording, or I'm sorry, the last conversation I've had regarding this. Um, and the reason I think it's it's good to mention is because in Dave Defeat, the um, machine gunner class had to use its bipods to be functional. If you try firing the uh, machine gun from... Um, you know, a stand-up position, it just sprayed everywhere, which is actually realistic to a certain degree. It probably was a little exaggerated in, in Day of Feet. I don't know, because I don't know World War II weapons all that well, but I can say with modern weapons like the M249, you can certainly fire it standing up, but it has to be done in very short bursts. It has to be done in maybe three bullet bursts. So you hold down the trigger for like, I don't know, a second or two, let go, and then reset the recoil type of thing. That's how you have to handle the M249 in real life. So I would imagine something similar would apply even to a World War II weapon, but I'm not 100% positive because I'm not that much of an expert on uh, weapons in general, and for that matter, World War II weapons. But the point I'm coming to is this. They could apply something similar to the higher caliber weapon, um, you know, from Call of Duty and things like that. So what I'm referring to is like the 50 cal sniper. Even the 33 at Lapua has got a lot of recoil. So I think what you could do is apply the machine gunner logic to those types of rifles in Call of Duty and the other ones in which you have to be prone or have the bipod uh, deployed for that to be even remotely usable. Call of Duty already has those mechanics in place, so it wouldn't be impossible. The bipod does already exist in the game, and it already works with crouch and prone, so I would say just do the same thing um, if you really have to uh, do it that way. So yeah, that's Dave Defeat and the Compromise. Um, I do want to talk about one other game real quickly. So I have brought up... Um, Cyber Ghost Warrior Contracts 2 in some of my previous recordings, I don't think it would be possible to use the sniping element as an example for other games because as that video has stated and as other people have stated, it's one of those things that you have to keep in mind 
that you can't create a super realistic game because then nobody wants to play it. Unfortunately, Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2 happens to be that, but uh, there is one thing that we can bring up, and maybe this is something that can be done, and that is caliber versus armor. In Cyber Ghost Warrior Contracts, um, the bullet you're using or the caliber you're using matters because there are enemies in the game with a lot of armor that do require either a large caliber or an armor-piercing bullet to get through that armor. I think something similar could be applied because there is a example from way back in the day, Rainbow Six Three Raven Shield. Cool thing about Raven Shield is how customizable the game was. You picked everything down to what kind of armor you're wearing, and you had the option between light, medium, or even heavy armor. I think this was the same thing that was applied to Vegas, uh, which came much later, but um, don't quote me on that because <laughs> I'd have to Google that to confirm. But um, I think you could do something similar in which the game registers uh, a certain caliber as being either defeated by or resisted by that particular armor. I think that would for sure be another way to handle it. Um, it might be a little bit more complicated to do, I guess, in comparison to the bipod idea, but maybe that could be done. Uh, one other thing, too, I want to bring up, and I, I see that I failed to pull up a Wikipedia tab, but uh, we'll just leave it on the screen, I guess. So my other compromise would be just to not do snipers. If snipers are really going to cause that much of a balance problem and it's it's just not going to be feasible for a programming perspective, um, then I would say just screw it. Don't put snipers in the game. A lot of games are really small enough to be using um, a marksman rifle. Honestly. Because if you look at real life, uh, the times that you bust out a sniper rifle, like an actual sniper rifle, is for really anything that's greater than 800 yards. A lot of your marksman rifles that use 7.62 NATO, like the M36, those rifles um, are rated for 800 yards. Heck, even the um, light machine guns of today are rated for 800 yards, uh, with an optic, of course. Uh, just look at the Negev. The Negev has 800 yards effective as it's uh, listed uh, thing, though you likely won't find a machine gunner doing that because machine gunners aren't trained for long range shots. I mean, yeah, they could do it as like a suppression type of thing, but it can be done if desperation calls for that. Um, or it's an SOL situation, then I'm sure you, an, a, a trained machine gunner, whether it be a Negev or one of the other 800 yard machine guns, can certainly do that. Um, so yeah, I think that's actually another thing too. I just want to deviate and bring up real quickly while we're on the topic. I say buff MGs because MGs are, aren't the, um, only ones suffering. Well, marksmen's are too, but yeah, MGs suffer too. I think that games really should be, uh, giving MGs more range, especially Call of Duty. I have noticed in Call of Duty that a lot of machine guns are about AR range and that's just really dumb. They should be having an advantage over um, machine guns. I'm sorry, machine guns should be having an advantage over ARs uh, because that's that's the main difference. Is isn't it isn't the caliber, it's the barrel size. If you look at a lot of the machine guns and compare them to current use ARs like the M4, the M4 only has a 14 and a half inch barrel. It's really tiny by military standards, uh, at least for a, a main frontline weapon. Um, a lot of countries are using 16-inch barrels uh, for frontline weaponry. Um, very specialized units like Gigan or GSG-9, they're using much smaller barrels, but to be fair, they're not really concerned with the main battlefield. A lot of their engagements are in buildings, so... You know, but point is, is that they have very short barrels usually on ARs. And if you look at a lot of the machine guns like the Negev and some of the others, they have very long barrels. Uh, I don't remember which model of Negev uh, it is, but I remember having over a 20-inch barrel. So those things can really fling a bullet downrange if you absolutely have to, and I think that that should be honored in games like uh, Call of Duty because you are, um, you know, taking the time to aim it, the time to get set up and everything, you know, those 
those two things alone take longer than an AR to do. So you should be rewarded for the time and tactics that you use on that weapon. Um, yeah, actually, while we're on this topic, um, let me go ahead and bring up Marksman's 2. Marksman rifles use similar calibers to the ARs, for now, at least in real life. Uh, there is a test going on by SOCOM to use the 6.5mm Creedmoor instead of the 7.62 NATO uh, for Marksman rifles um, as like a semi-auto solution. Uh, there are certainly other tests going on besides the 6.5mm Creedmoor, and unfortunately I don't remember them off the top of my head. I think there is an attempt to make the uh, 300 Win Mag a semi-auto. I don't know if that's really going to be a good idea, but we'll see, I guess, if that really happens. But, um, yeah, so what sets the Marksman Rifle apart from the uh, ARs is the exact same thing that we were just talking about with machine guns. They have a longer barrel. They're designed for longer ranges and to keep the bullet velocity up. So they should be at a much greater range um, than the ARs, just like machine guns. Unfortunately, a lot of games don't do that. Also, it takes a ridiculous amount of bullets uh, to, to kill someone <laughs> in those games. In Call of Duty, the FAL, which is the 762 NATO, takes five shots to the upper torso. I can tell you that won't be the case with something like the M36, which is an extremely long barrel marksman. It really should only take two hits if the first one doesn't, like, cause a ton of bleeding to the target or straight out incapacitates them. So it should only take two shots, really. Three if the target's super resilient or has armor, maybe. But other than that, I mean, it's just kind of like, I think that the whole thing needs balance, not just snipers, but marksmen's machine guns, because they're so far behind. So that's kind of my take on everything. Um, but I would be interested to hear your opinion on the matter. So please go to the comments and let me know what you think. Thanks for listening.